Thank, thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and I'm, I'm pleased to join the, this debate. And let me first uh, turn to acknowledge, and I know I'm, I'm not supposed to say these sorts of things, but let me turn and acknowledge my good friend from uh, Etobicoke North for introducing the bill. I greatly appreciate it. And I do that in my father's name, who died of MS. And I thank her for that because this is a bill, if my dad had been alive, albeit may not have been something that he could have had treatment for because of the, the type of MS that he had. He had what's colloquially called rampaging MS, which means he never plateaus, he continually gets worse on a continuum that looks like a curve that's straight up to the sky. And so his life was a misery for the last 10 years of his life after he was diagnosed. And along with that misery came an acceptance of, as he once told me, someone dealt me some cards and this is the hand I have to play. But he said, no one dealt the hand for your mother because she has to play the same hand that I have because she's my life partner. And that is what this is about. It's about saying to those families like mine that there may be hope and we should find out if it's there. We're not sure. This is not an absolute. You know, in life you hear the old adage about absolutes, death and taxes. My father was happy to pay his taxes from the time he turned 14 and went to work in Ireland. And he was happy to pay them in this country when he showed up in 1962. But he died too young because of a disease that took his life that we had no cure for. And along that continuum, the quality of his life depreciated because there was no other treatments. If he was alive today, he would say to me, this is probably not a treatment that will help me. But indeed, it ought to be available to someone else who may be helped by it. Because of what he knew his life was. And what we knew his life was, which was a living hell. This was a man who worked all his life, from the time he was a boy. He went to the shipyards as a boy. He was 14 years old. He came to this country because he ran out of work in a place where there wasn't work and brought his family here, me included, to this place. And when it came time for him to enjoy the last part of his life with my mother, his life partner, in retirement, he was robbed of that, and so was she because of this disease. And there are colleagues in here who are in the last parliament, who are in this parliament, and there's some new colleagues in this parliament whose families are indeed afflicted to the same way, maybe not to the degree where my father was with the disease, but indeed suffer from MS. My, my friend from York Southwestern was saying to me, remarking to you earlier about his brother, and I know there are other members on the other side who also have family members. Do this for them. They deserve that. They deserve no less than that. We have an opportunity here to not wave the magic elixir. There isn't a magic elixir. What there is is a clinical trial that's asked for. Let's move to that. We literally have thousands of folks who have left Canadians, who have left this country to go and have the procedure around this world, who have come home. We can study them. We can see how they're doing. We can see where they were before because they were being treated with the usual treatment regimes, which are drugs, which basically numb my father into a, a state of semi-comatose half the time between morphine and all the other drugs he had to take to try and numb his pain. Let not them have to suffer that again. Let not them have to go through what he did. I don't wish this, this life that I watched my father lead on anyone else. It was agony for us to watch, let alone the agony my father endured as an individual, as stoic as he was, with bruises from one end of his shin to the other because, because he kicked the coffee table to make that pain better than the pain that he had because of the MS. And here we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to say to folks, we want to give you a chance. That's all it is, a chance. No more than that. It's a hope. It's a glimmer of hope. No more than that. It's all that it is. You know, 
The one thing my dad never had and all MS sufferers over the, the decades have never had is hope. Madam, Madam Speaker, none. No hope. They knew when they were diagnosed, that was it. The best that the MS Society and all of the other folks who do the good work that they do could give them was a drug therapy. You know, when I watched my family, I watched my parents, I watched my mother become an advocate like you've never seen before. If you want to find an advocate, you want to see what happens to a little Scotswoman when she decides that her life partner is going to get the best care she could possibly find. Well, let me tell you, you don't ever want to get between her and it. And I'll tell you, if he was alive today, you don't want to get between my mother and that treatment if she thought her man should have it. Because there's no way in the world you'd get between them. Because if you tried, you'd get run over. All four foot eleven her would knock you down and knock the dozen of you down and the next dozen as well. She would go to her physician and tell my dad's physician the treatment she found on the internet that they were doing in Europe or they were doing in South America and say, I want it for him. Even though the physician would say, well, you won't work for him. I don't care, she'd say. You don't know. You have no idea. Because you're shooting in the dark. And that's what they do with MS patients. Try this, they'll say. Maybe it'll work. But we won't know for sure because we can't measure it. Because the next time you have an attack, we don't know if you're any better off or the attack was less than you had the last time. They don't know. You can't measure it. It is a symptomatic disease. There are things that certainly happen. You end up in a wheelchair. You end up with pneumonia constantly. You end up eventually in congestive heart failure. If you're lucky like my dad did, you, you managed to survive the first time even though he has a non-resuscitating a non order against him, saying, if I go, I go, leave me alone, don't try to resuscitate me. And he managed to get through that. How many others didn't? How many others died because we didn't give them some hope? How many others are giving up? And they're young people. You know, my dad used to say, I got it late in life, I'm a lucky one. Because he, he would see others who were young, young young folks, vibrant young folks in their 20s and 30s. He got diagnosed when he was nearly 60 years old. He'd say, I'm a lucky one. I don't know how ever he managed to get the courage to say he was a lucky one to have MS late in his life. I haven't the faintest idea, but he did. Because I don't think anybody can be lucky regardless of the age they get it at. This is not a lucky life to have. But what we can do for those folks out there who are suffering is give them some hope. Don't let them give up. Because that's what happens with this disease. It saps the energy out of you. It it's eventually saps the life out of you. But what it does is it dulls any sense you have about going forward. Because you have no sense that you can go forward. Because you know what the end will be. And that journey along that road to the end is literally a living hell. Give them some hope. All we're asking, this bill asks for no more than to say, let's do the proper science. It's not about voodoo. It's not about snake oil. It's let's do the proper science. Let's make sure it's an adequate and correct treatment for those who may need it, because not every sufferer will indeed fall into the protocol. They will not. And they know it. The sufferers know that. They already know that. There's lots of them out there saying, you know, I'm probably not going to be one of the ones that this, is, this treatment would, would work for. So therefore, I shouldn't get it. They're not all saying they want it. They all hope that this is indeed something that will help. There's no question about that. All you have to do is talk to them. You know, I, I was in the grocery store. Madam, thank you, Madam Chair. Let me, let me end with this. I was, in, I was in the grocery store the other day with my, with my wife. And this couple came by, and I thought, geez, I recognize them. And sure enough, it was the couple I thought I knew. She had been to South America to have the treatment. The last time I had seen her, she was in a walker. This time when I saw her, she was walking, and her husband was pushing the buggy with the groceries in it, and she was walking beside him without any assistance. And that's why we should give them hope, and that's why we need to support this bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker.